Yeah. This is what I do sometimes when I see that I haven't watered my plants as well as I should have. <laughs> if it's good enough for me, it's good enough for them. Now I can have some water. Hi everyone, it's Melissa, your Plantita Abogada here at Tasteful Nodes, coming to you today with a Syndapsis collection update video. Yeah, last time I made this video, I quit shortly thereafter because the pressures of collecting Syndapsis were insane, like pricing wise and personality wise. I mean, it was just wild. It was just wild. And it made no sense at that point to continue to collect in such an insane environment. However, a lot of my good friends are also Syndapsis collectors and seeing their posts about the new Syndapsis that they have or gosh, getting plant meal because they never stopped really sending Syndapsis over. I really couldn't help but fall back into collecting. <laughs> so thank you to all of my Syndapsis fairies. Um, you know who you are. Thank you so much. Today, we're gonna update my Syndapsis collection and I hope you're ready because you've got a lot of good stuff. Before we get started, I'd like to run through my three disclaimers because they're really important, especially if you're like me, trying to be good, trying to resist, and not succeeding. So number one, KK Bitayo, Kanya Kanyang Bayad. For our Western friends, it means we each pay our own way. I will not be held liable if you spend your rent money on one of these stunners and you must have it. Please, spend prudently. Number two, I'm not an expert in syndapsis. I named one syndapsis for goodness sake, but I am a hobbyist. Anything I share with you regarding syndapsis may be based on my own personal observations and experiences, or they may be factual. At that point, I'll be sure to put the source of that factual information I share with you at the bottom of the screen. And then number three, a lot of the information that I may share based on my personal observations and experiences are specific to my growing conditions here in the Philippines. In the Philippines, we've got four or five different microclimates. So even within the Philippines itself, we don't have the same exact growing conditions. I expect that's the same wherever you live. So find people in your area, in your communities who have experience with these plants, who can tell you how much they cost, where to find them, how to grow them better. And let's have all of our plants flourish together, okay? I have three different trays on the table. So one tray is actually full of plants that are currently being registered at the International Arid Society's cultivar registry. I don't think any of them have been approved yet, but if you want more detailed information about them from the people who've submitted the applications themselves, you can find these at the International Arid Society's cultivar page. And I'll put the link right down at the bottom of the screen. The second tray, those guys, are Philippine native syndapsis. So remember what I said about the different microclimates, growing conditions here? Yep, different provinces. So that would be this tray right over here. And then because it's not just the Philippines that has stunning syndapsis, I have an international tray full of the ones that were gifted to me and others that I had to buy my, for myself because they were just ridiculously gorgeous. So yeah, we are diving in headfirst back into the Syndapsis collecting game. <laughs> and with that, I think we should just start with the IAS crew first. The first plant on my list is Syndapsis erlinda. And that would be this gorgeous gal right here. Yeah, gorgeous silvery leaves. It is such a forgiving plant. I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten where I put this plant and it's dried up and shriveled down to just a stem and yet it's still here. So this plant is super forgiving. It wants to climb. I have to give it a better pot, repot it and give it something to climb. So this plant actually has an application with the International Aeroid Society and it's been since probably 2021 or 2022. So Syndapsis Erlinda was named by Paul Tolentino Ferranda, and it was named in honor of his mother, who is a teacher and a plant hobbyist in her own right. I can't think of a better way to honor our parents by doing that. 
Our second syndapsis is Syndapsis magica. This plant has an application with the International Arid Society's cultivar page. I don't think it's registered just yet, but man, it is a stunner. I visited my friend Alicia Quintana, better known as Baby Moody, beloved Syndapsis collector. She probably has one of the two best collections of Syndapsis I've seen here in the Philippines. When we visited her, she had two greenhouses of Syndapsis, um, bins full of propagations, racks full of plants that she was observing. So this lady knows her Syndapsis and she really likes them. <laughs> so her focus isn't just on Syndapsis that are native, but she also enjoys collecting Syndapsis from other Southeast Asian countries as well. Now, Syndapsis magica, or magica, as we like to say it here in the Philippines, is actually a play on the word magic. And let me tell you, after seeing this plant in person, the mother plant, I agree. So the plant looks like a Mayari, looks like it, right? But it actually has a lime green variegation when it first unfurls that eventually deepens into this beautiful bright yellow. I mean, the word that comes to mind is a Filipino word, matingkad. Um, not shiny, but like in your face bright. And that's what Syndapsis Magica is. The one that I got from her, um, she gifted this to me in December as a one-noter and there we go. We have some growth. So I'm really excited to see this baby grow and I'm really excited to have this in my collection. Thanks, baby moody. <laughs> Number three on my list is another Philippine Syndapsis, Syndapsis calis. So this is named by another friend of mine, Alan Edsfar Diansoy. He is better known in the Philippines as Juan Halaman. He's on Facebook and Instagram. And he's quite the plant collector himself. The Syndapsis callis is actually characterized by these elongated leaves, right? I mean, they just don't widen. And as it grows, the leaves narrow even more. It's just, it's a stunning plant. I need to give it something taller to climb so that we could see it if it does get bigger, if it continues to get bigger. It's definitely something special on its own. Check out how narrow these leaves are. They're narrower than my finger. Really, really cool. The callus, as this plant is named by Edsfar, is actually a weapon from the peoples of Mindanao, which is the southern part of the Philippines. So pretty cool name for a pretty neat plant. Our fourth syndapsis is Bukang Liwaiwai. And it is this guy right here. I bought a plant from the namer of this plant. Actually, there are a whole bunch of namers. Give me a second. Let me give a shout out to all of them. So namers of this plant include Maria Elena de los Reyes, Maria Cristina Militar, Eileen Cheng, Kathy Federigan, and Sheila Kezon. I told you there were a lot of them. <laughs> so these are some of my friends in the Syndapsis collecting community. But they all pulled together to come up with the application, the name, everything for this plant. I bought one of these from Len Len, from Maria Elena, uh, last year around April. And I'll flash a picture of it on the screen. I need to give it more light to bring out that yellow midrib that it's known for. Now, the name Bukang Liwaiwai actually refers to um, like sunrise here in the Philippines. However, Liwaiwai is also the name for the goddess of sunrise. So I thought that was a really nice touch of theirs to again go with the goddess. You know, you have Mayari, um, you have, I think I've seen Atala, who is also a goddess of the stars, so the moon, the stars. Now you have Goddess of the Dawn. So really nice touch, ladies. <laughs> Plant number five on my list is Syndapsis Sicilim. Or is it Sicilim? I don't know. I think it's Sicilim. Sicilim. I believe the namers of Sicilim are the same as the namers of Liwaiwai. However, I think the plant that was used for the application originally came from Maria Cristina Militar. And this is an interesting, interesting plant. So we have a goddess of the moon, we have a goddess of 
dawn, we have a goddess of dusk. And Sisinim is actually a Kapampangan word, so it's a dialect in the Filipino language, meaning dusk. And the plant is actually quite dark in appearance. I've seen them much, much darker than this, like almost a black blue. It's just such an interesting plant in its evolution. So the older it gets, the darker the leaves become. Sisinim is also, as I mentioned earlier, the goddess of dusk and a really poetic part of their application, which I absolutely adore, is how when dusk, when the night turns, begins to darken, the cicadas come out and welcome the goddess Sisilim with their song. And it's just like, oh my gosh, yes, completely adore that. And I can completely relate based on my experiences here on the farm, with cicadas and dusk, just lovely. Okay, so plant number six on my list has a very naughty name. Very, very naughty. Our sixth syndapsis is Syndapsis QY, Queen Inna. The naughty name belongs to a plant that mutated and was cultivated by a good friend of mine, Paolo Parcon. Now, I can't say the name online. Its initials are QY if you're in any Philippine Syndapsis communities. If you're not, um, the name kind of rhymes with Queen Inna. So queen meaning, you know, queen and Inna is mother. <laughs> okay, so I'm not gonna beat around the bush anymore. Okay, we're leaving that behind. But interesting thing about the queen Inna, I'm just gonna call it QY in parentheses because right now Paolo is actually preparing an application for this plant with the International Arid Society. The leaves are curly, we have variegations on them. This one on top doesn't, but this new leaf looks really light compared to this other leaf. Yeah, so it's an interesting, interesting variegation. You've got the, the texture of the leaf, you've got the shape, and then you've got variegation as well. And that is plant number six on my list, Syndapsis QY, Queen Inna, for now. Before I jump into the next segment. So we just discussed the Philippine native syndapsis that are under application or will be under application with the International Area Society. Now I want to talk about the Philippine syndapsis from different provinces within the country. Before I jump in, let me reiterate. The Philippines has four or five different microclimates in the country. Yes, we're a tropical country. Yes, we only experience two kinds of, I guess, seasons, which is dry and wet. However, how we experience them varies between provinces and microclimates. So with that being said, I wanna put up a few definitions on the screen, just so that we're on the same page together, okay? Word number one is ecotype. An ecotype refers to plants that are uniform in appearance, but distinct from other populations. Thank you, Hardinero Sunog, for that. Within the country, we have, again, different microclimates, right? We also have different types of syndapsis. And I would argue that the syndapsis are uniform in appearance in that, you know, they are viners, they are climbers, they are, what the heck happened here? What in the world? Great. Back to what I was saying, they share similar qualities in terms of appearance but they're still distinct from one another. And as soon as I put up pictures and videos, you will see why. <laughs> the second definition that I wanted to refer to is variation in leaf phenotypes. What that refers to is the manifestation of plants to adapt to different habitats under different kinds of environmental pressures. Again, kind of like ecotypes where you know, they all are the same, but not the same. When you have leaf variations or variation in leaf phenotypes, it means that these plants adapted to the kind of environmental conditions they were dealt with. The synapsis may have bigger silver areas. They may have less silver areas. They may have no silver areas. You know, these could all be a response to the environmental stimuli that they find themselves growing in. The change in appearance can be due to evolution in response to survival strategies. That's exactly what I was just saying. <laughs> 
I could have just read it out loud. And that would have been the same thing as what I was explaining. Anyway, let's go on to the third definition so we can move on. The third definition is phenotypic plasticity. Characteristics an organism adapts in response to environmental variation. So the differences within the different microclimates, uh, the different provinces, the different growing conditions, all of these go together. Ecotypes, variation in leaf phenotypes, and phenotypic plasticity. The reason I say that, and I bring that up, is because most of these plants in this tray are unnamed. However, there are very, very different appearances to these syndapsis. And I'll go ahead and make a chart for this to put on Facebook, maybe Instagram, just so you guys can appreciate the differences between syndapsis belonging to different provinces in the Philippines. Our seventh syndapsis is a syndapsis from Nueva Vizcaya. And that is this big boy right here. Yeah, check out that leaf. Pretty huge. It has this beautiful silver and gray pattern that is still characteristic of syndapsis. However, it's got this really thick pattern in the middle. I don't know if you guys see that fishbone effect right here in the middle where it looks jagged enough. It's also quite prominent in the leaves. That, that midrib jagged pattern design in the middle. That is from Nova Vizcaya. I'm gonna go ahead and contrast that to another plant that I have here, and that is a syndapsis from Cavite, another province. This is the syndapsis from Cavite. This big boy right here. Yeah, I know, I need to give him another poll, but <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Okay, for now, let's go ahead and grab this leaf, and let's turn it over. And then let's go ahead and compare it to the newer leaves of Nueva Vizcaya. So see what I was talking about with that big midrib in the center of Nueva Vizcaya and this less, I mean, it's in terms of the leaf size, okay? It doesn't take up as much space, the, the darker green midrib here in the middle. Plus it doesn't have as distinct borders as this one where it has that fishbone quality. This one doesn't, the cavite doesn't. The cavite is definitely rounder in terms of its leaves. All of them have that really round aspect to them versus the narrower Nueva Vizcaya. Even the older leaf is quite narrow rather than rounder, which the cavite shows everywhere. Remember what I was saying about phenotypic plasticity and what is this variation in leaf phenotypes? These are all coming to the forefront where you see that they have similarities but distinct differences yeah this plant right here and i'll go ahead and make this number nine is a syndapsis from camarines sur and if you look at this guy and compare it to let's say the cavite right here you could see that the camarines sur has more of silver but flecking or feathering green on it i guess the silver parts are much more prominent on the Camarines Sor syndapsis compared to the Cavite syndapsis and the Nueva Vizcaya syndapsis. In fact, on the leaf itself, there's just, it looks like a feathering of dark green rather than a feathering of silver, if you know what I mean. The silver is the dominant color here and the green just, just takes a back seat as decoration, as feathering on the leaf. Now, let's go ahead and go to more silver. And this is a syndapsis from Iloilo. This is number 10, my mother's hometown. So syndapsis from Iloilo is much more silver than the syndapsis from Camarines Sur, right? However, the syndapsis from Iloilo doesn't have the same, I guess, flecking or, or feathering of this dark green. In fact, it's really muted on it. I wanna say it's almost like a light green or a green gray green instead of a dark green that you see in Camarines Sur. Really pretty. This guy, oh gosh, I really, really need to give it something to climb on because I need to get this leaf out and it's barely coming out. Our 11th syndapsis is a syndapsis from Holo Sulu. This is the Southern part of the Philippines. And this is a syndapsis that is actually, you could feel ribbing on it. 
you could feel a lot of ribbing on the big leaf and you could feel a lot of ribbing on the small leaf. So there is a different texture to this plant altogether. It kind of looks like a silver princess, if you're familiar with that. Kind of looks like, at least that's what the new leaf looks like. The older leaf kind of looks like a cloud, but it's got this really distinctive ribbing on the leaf that you don't feel in any of the other syndapsis. It's really a stunner, but I really need to get it on a pole. I have a feeling it's like a varicosum where it won't give me more leaves until it's climbing, until it, it's securely attached to something. Yeah. Number 12 on my list is a syndapsis from Isabella. And this syndapsis, how do I compare it to any of these other guys? Because it can't be compared to any of these other guys. For this, for the syndapsis from Isabella, there is ribbing kind of similar to the syndapsis from Holo, from Sulu. But there's also some, there's, I don't know if this is a tricolor or what, but there is some light green on it and some silver and some dark green. I need to make sure that that is exactly what is going to be growing out of this. So I don't know if this one can actually be classified as a tricolor or not, but it's an interesting, interesting syndapsis to have in the collection. Our 13th syndapsis is a syndapsis from Mount Ginatungan, Camarines Sur. So a mountain plant from Camarines Sur. And let me pull out the other Camarines Sur so we can compare and contrast. These are from the same province, guys. Yeah, ecotypes, different growing conditions, adaptation to these different growing conditions. Heck yeah, look at this. So the Mount Ginatungan, which is here on the side, um, came to me as a darker leafed syndapsis. Of course, my growing conditions in Tarlac are really, really hot. Don't forget, it's a tropical savanna. So very different from a mountain, um, I guess, climate or growing conditions, temperatures. But it's also very different from the Camarines Sur. Even the new leaf of the Mount Ginatungan plant, which is this guy right here, the new leaf is very different from the Camarines Sur's leaf, where you know, you've got all that silver, but with a speckling of dark green. No, not similar at all. I would love to see if this new leaf actually darkens over time. If it does darken over time, then Camarines Sur actually has two very distinctive syndapsis, all within its province itself. So there you go. How you like them apples? That is number 13 on my list. So remember what I said earlier about a tricolor syndapsis from Isabella? Well, I think this is a tricolor also. Our 14th syndapsis is a syndapsis from Palawan and it's been given the market name Palawan Rain. It is definitely a tricolor. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. I see a light gray here. I see a light green here. I see a dark green here. The only other tricolor syndapsis I possibly have within this group that's unnamed is the one from Isabella. So it's fascinating to see these differences between the different provinces. I mean, stunning, stunning all of them. Next on my list, this is Syndapsus Ilocos. And Syndapsus Ilocos, who can I even compare you to, dude? It's got a little bit of feathering in it, but it, it is not as feathered as Camarines Sur is. The coloring is not as dark as let's say the Nueva Vizcaya is and the leaves are not as hard either. It's just a very soft syndapsis, really pretty, but an oddity in itself too. The colors are light green and dark green. I don't know if you could even call this a silver. It's not really very silver at all. The older leaf might be a silver, might, but I mean, it doesn't come out that way. It's definitely like a light, lighter, and a darker green on green. And that is Ilocos, Syndapsis from Ilocos. I have another Syndapsis here and it's climbing beautifully. This is a Syndapsis from Surigao. So that's one of the island provinces and it is a stunner. It is, look at this, look at this leaf right here. It, it's, it's really pretty. I bet it'll look fantastic as a shingler. When it came to me, the leaves were still rounded, but now that it's been growing here, it's really hot. The leaves have elongated, as you can see here, and the newer leaf is elongated as well. The silver, the patterns of silver have changed as well. So the newest leaf does not appear to be as silver as everybody else. I mean, there's still silver on it, 
but not as silver as everybody else, which is something interesting to watch out for. So if the plants are growing in response to their environment, this one is definitely something that responds quickly and adapts quickly. That is Syndapsis from Surigao. Finally, we have a Syndapsis from Palawan. Some people call it Palawan Jade here in the Philippines. The interesting features of the Syndapsis are its texture. So it is a dark green plant, obviously, it's a jade. Uh, it's dark green, but the texture is, is not soft. I want to say that, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not ribbed like the Holo Sulu is, but it's also really smooth. It's almost like a very, very smooth sandpaper. Uh, if you've ever been to Home Depot and touched the sandpapers, because I like doing that, <laughs> then that's what this feels like. It feels like almost, um, almost like a triubii in terms of its heft. It's a thick leaf. Um, it's a thicker leaf, I should say, compared to these guys. It's not as thick as triubii's, but it's, there's definitely some substance in this leaf. And this is a Palawan syndapsis. That is it for our Philippine native syndapsis. <laughs> a lot of syndapsis, all the syndapsis, oh my goodness. So yeah, it's a little much, but I mean, and this is only just a taste of what we have here in the Philippines. I have friends who collect these syndapsis and actually who propagate and share them with me. I won't mention any names, but please know that I'm thankful to be included in your propagations <laughs> for these plants. Now let's go ahead and get started into the international part of my syndapsis collection. So I can genuinely say that majority of the syndapsis that I have in this international tray are from Indonesia. <laughs> I have one that isn't from Indonesia, at least according to the person who gave it to me. So let's start with that guy. This one right here, my friends, is Syndapsis Green Vein. And I still have the label here. Yeah, it says Green Vein Origin Thailand for Miss Melissa. And I won't read the rest because it's a really sweet dedication, but still. So it's this beautiful plant right here. And oh my goodness, look at how happy this Syndapsis is. The Green Vein, it has a green leaf and then a grayish green pattern on it rather than silver. And then you can see these green veins going through this light green pattern. I want to say it might even be a tricolor. But my goodness, it is such a stunner. And I love this plant so, so much. However, it's been growing some leaves that don't show the pattern anymore over here. So again, I think it has something to do with the growing conditions I have here um, in Tarlac. But, you know, the green veins, even though the patterns have gone away, the tricolor that I was mentioning, the veins are still very prominent, even in these newer leaves, which is really pretty. I'm totally going to pot this up in a hanging basket and just let it go wild. Let it root in different places, cut, let it root again, cut, and just let it go crazy because it is such a happy, gorgeous hanging plant. <laughs> Next on my list is this plant. It's a Syndapsis Silver Cloud Albo. And such a stunner this plant is. Check out this leaf. My, my favorite leaf of them all. Almost has a completely white midrib. I mean, stunning, stunning. So you've got a tricolor here. You've got the white, the light green, and then the dark green. And all of the leaves show it. I wish they showed it stronger, but it is a beautiful, beautiful plant. The inner nodes are not as wide as, let's say, the Erlinda or the Holo Sulu but it's a beautiful plant and probably one that would enjoy climbing. Just need to find the right spot for it. See, I'm going Syndapsis blind now. I've got so many on the table that I don't even know what to look at anymore. It's just insane. This, my friends, is a Syndapsis sparkling lava. <sighs> the sparkle is there. It's on all the leaves. It's gorgeous. It's such a pleasing plant. The variegations are still showing through, kind of, like it says, it's sparkling, definitely. The lava part, is that from maybe the patterns? Or is it the color? Either way, really, really cool plant. And it's on the IAS cultivar page if you want to check out more details about it. Next on my list is the Syndapsis Diamond or the SP Salaka. So this plant doesn't have an application on the International Airwood Society's cultivar page. I wish it did because it's really stunning but it's fine. 
<laughs> it's a beautiful plant. The variegations are stable as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the thing is, it's just, you know, is this a marbling pattern on it? It's really white. So it whitens as it gets older. It comes out like a light green on green, light green on a dark green when it first starts out, but it darkens or hardens into a white, as you see here. Next on my list is the Syndapsis Exotica Mint. And it is this guy right here. Oh my gosh, it's quite dry. I'm so sorry. Okay, so this is the mint and it's very minty. I don't understand it. The previous leaf is not so minty but the newer leaf is. So I guess after propagation, it comes back. I don't know. I haven't had it very long. I had it since December. It's now March. Okay. A few months and I only have one leaf to show for it, but it's true to its name. Um, Syndapsis exotica mint. So the next plant on our list is Syndapsis machen. This plant, oh my goodness. I saw a friend. The friend that I'm referring to is Mikael from Leaf Gloss. If you saw that unboxing, yeah, same person. Partly at fault for my fall back into the Syndapsis collecting game. <laughs> Anyhow, the Syndapsis Machan mother plant. Oh my goodness, such a stunner. I'll ask if I could borrow his photo so I could share it with you guys. The Machan is an interesting um, textured plant. So if you're a toucher like I am, you'll notice that it, it, it's, it feels like it's blistery, bubbly, whatever you want to call it. It's got that texture to it, but also the undersides feel almost rubbery. So the top, not so much. The top feels like velvet, but the bottom feels like rubber. It's such a stunning plant. The green on green, love it. His plant, even more gorgeous. So his plant, you know, is, is the goal, is what we're trying to go for. Hopefully we can reach that goal um, someday with this guy. The next plant on my list is Syndapsis crayon. So this plant is Syndapsis crayon. The texture of these leaves, simply fantastic. I mean, they've got this beautiful gray. Okay, don't look at this plant. This plant right here. This is not Sydapsis crayon. This is a hijacker. <laughs> but these two guys right here in the front, I mean, it, it's beautiful. So I know I was talking about the feeling of Machan. This is smooth. It's smooth. It's grayish green. It's Glaucus, I guess. Is that what they call it? I know it could apply to bluish green, but I don't know if grayish green works. Maybe. But it's, it's just a fantastic, fantastic plant. And it's so easy to care for. Leave it alone, set it and forget it. It's just done. You know, it's wonderful. It's such a great little plant. So happy to have it. Thank you. Whoever gave it to me. I don't remember. The next plant is a plant from my friend Paolo. So yeah, this guy, Paolo. He actually sent this over to myself and my husband. And this, my friends, is Syndapsis Galaxy. <gasps> Somebody ate my galaxy. Beautiful plant. It reminds me of the Monstera Thai constellation. And quite the happy plant. Look at that. So what I have going on in this tray is it's bottom watered all the time. Easy. Easy. And as long as I don't forget to water it, we're happy. Everyone's happy. This is the Syndapsis Galaxy. The next plant on my list is the Syndapsis Moonlight Albow. So this is the Syndapsis Moonlight Albow. Poor thing, got a little bit burnt on its newest leaf, but it's still gorgeous. It's still one of my favorites. This is from my friend, Daryl. Gosh, I can't remember the name of his store, but I'll go ahead and flash it on the bottom of the screen. <laughs> I bought this a few months before I actually got it because we never could find the time to set like a time to pick it up or to have it delivered or life was just so busy for both of us and he's another synapsis collector with a great fantastic collection this is one of his and it's one of my favorites too synapsis moonlight albo so the next plant is a synapsis snake scale and it's this guy right here and i mean these guys are pretty notorious for changing their appearance in different growth conditions. So <laughs> the older leaf has all of this beautiful patterns on it and the newest leaf, nothing at all. So it'll be an interesting plant to watch, to see if I could actually bring out those patterns again. If I could provide the different kind of, of lifestyle it prefers. The next plant I absolutely fell in love with. It was a gift from Baby Moody 
However, it hasn't done anything. <laughs> and this is Syndapsis Curlew. It's just sitting there. Curlew's being pretty and all. It's just not doing anything. I'm still waiting for the new growth to come out. It's just sitting there. So Curlew is a light grayish green base with silver, light silver patterns on it. It's a stunner. It is beautiful. And then you can see some green veins on it. Really pretty plant. If you get a chance to get anything, I would definitely grab one of those. So my next plants are again from my friend Mikael at Leaf Gloss. These are Syndapsis from Sankuriang. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Sankuriang? Sankuriang. It's smooth. You could feel the ribbing, the midrib, not the midrib, but the veins on the side. And then you've got this beautiful yellowish variegation. Really pretty, really nice plants. The next plant on our list is Syndapsis peacock. This plant I saw in a post from Mikael and I had to have it, I had to have it. And I got lucky that he had one up for auction. If you like any of the plants that you see here on the table and I mentioned Mikael's name, check him out at the Philippine Syndapsis Society's Facebook page because he actually has Syndapsis up for bidding if you've got an importer from the Philippines, you are set. I mean, his syndapsis that he has for bidding, fantastic. And this is one of those guys. So here's the old leaf. And I'll have to take a close up of the new leaf. You've got these beautiful, gosh, what is it called? Like the old Super Mario games where it's not 3D yet, nothing is smoothed out. Pixelated, there we go. The leaf is pixelated. It's beautiful and I can totally see why they call it peacock. Look at the shape of that. It's just such a flirty, gorgeous plant. So this is the new leaf under my care. Got a little bit of, you know, a little blemish right down here. Something bit it, but it's growing. That's all that matters. <laughs> the next plant on my list is a syndapsis from Pajajaran. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Pajajaran. And it's another Indonesian syndapsis. Some people are here in the marketplace, they call it Syndapsis Silver Splash Bajajaran. However, I don't see any silver splash on it. I do see variegation, but no silver splashing. So I don't know how the silver splash came out. Really, really cool plant, gorgeous plant. Just a little oddball for me. Feels really smooth, got a beautiful texture to it, and it has green on green variegation, but no silver. <laughs> I feel, I don't know how to feel about that. Where's my silver? And that is Syndapsis Bajajaran, or Silver Splash Bajajaran. I apologize to any Indonesian viewers I have. I really am trying with the names, I promise. I looked them up on YouTube to see how the news would report some of these names. I think I, Bajajaran was the one that I got correct. Sankuriang, I'm not so sure, but I'm trying, and no offense is meant, okay, from the bottom of my heart. This next plant is an interesting plant as well. I'm telling you, I just, I love, I love the Indonesian syndapsis. They're fantastic plants. This is a syndapsis blue splash. And look at that leaf. So it's got this darker blue green leaf with this grayish pattern on it. There's no silver but it's, it's beautiful, definitely a splash. And that continues with the newer leaves with that feathering um, gray pattern on it, really nice. It kind of reminds me of the Syndapsis from Camarinesor. And here it is, the Syndapsis from Camarinesor, except the Syndapsis from Camarinesor is sparkly silver, and this is a gray. Um, rather than silver. There's no sparkle to it at all. Definitely a stunner and definitely growing really, really nicely in a mixture of lava rocks and moss. So that's what I have it in. This is what Mick had it in. He kept it in lava rock and moss on top and bottom watering underneath. And that's what I'm doing too. Super helpful when it comes to watering, guys. I'm telling you. Our next plant is Syndapsis batik. And... This is a stunner. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. The roots look great. The pattern looks really, really nice as well. It's such a beautiful, stunning plant. I can't wait to have more of these leaves. 
come out. It's top cut, so just waiting for the rest of it to come out and I'll be happy. The next plant on our list is Syndapsis Megil. And if you look here, this is a var variegated Syndapsis, I'm guessing. And yeah, I do still see variegation on this leaf, which is an interesting variegation. It's like a smattering of paint. It's like someone threw paint at the leaf and you know created some yellow white spots streaks on the silver parts it's beautiful the newest leaf has a little bit of the streaks right here on the side but no splattering of paint i'm looking forward to seeing this grow even more but i want to see more roots before i do anything with it the next plant i have here is uh, something that just stopped me in my tracks when i saw the mother plant such a stunner this, my friends, is Syndapsis paracensis neon. Stunning. And this is a half moon, the newest leaf. There's new growth coming out and I'm hoping that it's not gonna be like a full moon, but I'll deal with that problem when it comes. This new Syndapsis is a stunner. It's just beautiful. You've got this green, lime green on dark green leaves. And then you've got this I guess, how do you say this? You've got this beautiful winged petiole. It's, it's really fantastic. It's such a fantastic looking plant on both sides. The newest leaf is again, lime green on dark green. And I can't wait to see this thing grow out. There's a white variegated paracensis. There's a yellow variegated paracensis. There's a marbled variegated paracensis and a neon. Yeah. <laughs> so there are a few paracensis, but this is the one that totally stopped me in my tracks, took my breath away. Take my breath away. And that is Syndapsis paracensis neon. The next plant on our list is Syndapsis paracensis marble. So remember what I told you about Syndapsis paracensis neon stopping me in my tracks? Yeah, this gorgeous guy right here. Look at that. Yes, this my friends is the Syndapsis paracensis marble. So here we go, comparison wise. Yeah, really pretty. It kind of reminds me of an Epipremnum binatum marble. And I guess that's where the marble in its name comes from. But it is almost like a blue on a cream, a bluish cream. Does that color even exist? So what I understand from my Syndapsis friends is that if the Paracensis marble came from Indonesia. It's actually referred to as Syndapsis espisalaka marble, right? Otherwise, it is just a uh, Syndapsis paracensis marble. Kind of like it's not champagne unless it's from the champagne region in France kind of thing. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's really pretty. If I'm gonna have to rank it second to the neon green, but I mean, a very, very close second. I don't know if I even want to go into collecting the Paracensis albo or Aurea at this point, but maybe. <laughs> In any case, it's a Paracensis marble. So the last plants on my list are Noides, Noids. And I have a few that are noteworthy. This one is a Syndapsis Indoheart. That was, that's what they call it here on the market. It's a Noide. It's this light green leaf that hardens into a darker green leaf. It has some lighter green, still dark, but lighter green speckling on it. And the feel is velvet. Really, really cool. We have this Indonoid Narrow, which again has these narrow leaves. It kind of reminds me of the Callus, which is this guy right here, but not. Um, the Callus has even more narrow leaves. The patterns are definitely different on this as well. So again, phenotypical variances, maybe. We'll see about that. So two no noteworthy. I've got this Noid, which came from Baby Moody, and I don't have a label on it, and she doesn't have a label on it either. So yeah, but look at that. Really gorgeous, really long leafed and narrow. And I don't think we're maxing out the leaf size is almost as long as my hand. So I think we're not maxing out just yet. I think it's gonna get much, much bigger. 
and then I have this guy who I don't know how to explain it but is ribbed and beautifully silver but not sparkly just silver and then I finally have this guy another Noid but this one has like a feathery type um, silver variegation on it let me see if I can pull that out there you go and those are the last of my five Noids and that's the last of this episode. Woo! So in this area, I'll go ahead and do a tally of what my previous number of synapses were, how many died, and then the number of these synapses on the table for a total number of my collection. And I expect it to be bad. <laughs> I expect it to be pretty bad. Uh, and my collection is nowhere near that of Mikael's or Baby Moody's. So I think I can still collect a little more. <laughs> if you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to give this video a like. Subscribe to my channel. Turn on that notification bell so you get notified of future content. If my once a week videos are not good enough for you, check me out on Facebook. I'm there as Tasteful Nodes. I'll be putting together a graphic of all of the Philippine syndapsis that I have in my collection. I'm sure there are more, so that graphic may evolve, but at least you'll see what's there, right? If you just want to look at pretty pictures at night, check me out on Instagram. I'm there as Tasteful Nodes as well. Okay, guys, until next time, sa uulitin, keep your nodes classy and tasteful. Bye.